on a hot August night, we were in Burbank over at NBC, and we were all of uh, the program department. We were in tuxedos, and we were shooting a promotional special for the fall lineup. It's a long, boring night, to be honest. Um, and at one point in the night, and we're stifling yawns, <laughs> and at one point in the night, Selma Diamond and Doris Roberts get up on stage, and they're introducing a clip for Miami Vice. Only the bit that they're doing is Selma, Selma Diamond starts calling it Miami Nice. And, and Doris Roberts is like, no, it's not Miami Nice, it's Miami Vice. It's like these hot young cops and, the, and, and they were hilarious. I mean, they, they woke us up, perked us up. We were laughing at their banter. And, you know, meanwhile, we're shooting this as a promotional special, right? And, and then they roll the clip. And shortly thereafter, uh, within days, we'd had a development meeting. It was all internal and, and uh, Brandon and myself. And, and we continued to marvel about just the comedic chops and the attitude of these two 50 plus women, these actresses. And we kind of married that thought with, with one of those wonderful little boxes from USA Today, which would say, here's a snapshot of America. And if you're a 50 plus woman, you've got one in a billion chances of ever uh, getting married again, uh, ever this. And I mean, it was just like horrific odds against you. And we kind of asked ourselves the question, um, well, how about a positive look at a tough reality? Um, that kind of uh, Kate and Allie-like notion of how do you be a single mom in New York? Well, you do it with your best friend, that it's not so hard. And Golden Girls started as this kind of internal discussion of it doesn't, it doesn't have to suck to be a 50-plus woman in America. If you've got friends, you got people who you care about and love, then that's okay. And um, I had a, a pitch with uh, Whit Thomas, and a good writer came in and, and pitched me a show about a young female lawyer, office comedy, and you know, I was polite, and I said, eh, I'm really, that's not the show I'm interested in. I said, but I'll tell you the show that I am, because I had great respect for Paul Witt and Tony Thomas. I said, here's the show I'm interested in. And the writer went, yeah, no, that's not interesting to me. And, and I was essentially pitching our Golden Girls idea. And um, they got up and ended the meeting, and the door closed. And then Paul and Tony poked their head back in and said, we really like that idea, even though that writer didn't. And I went, well, we like it too. You know, why don't you get Susan Harris? She created Soap. It's my favorite comedy of all time. Um, why don't you get Susan Harris to do And they said, we'll get back to you. They call me back an hour later, and they said, call Susan this afternoon at this phone number. And I said, really? And they go, she's interested. So, um, Susan Harris never came in to pitch the show. I picked up the phone and I called Susan Harris and said, here's the idea that we're interested in. It has, it has this spirit um, and it has this kind of philosophy around it. And Susan said, I love it. Will you guys ever put this on the air? And I said, well, Susan, if you love it and you write it, then we'd have to put it on the air because you're wonderful. I mean, that it's the script that will compel us. So we ponied up money for Susan Harris to write a script. And um, the Golden Girls, the first draft that she delivered 
was sensational. I was running around reading scenes out loud to anyone who would listen. Um, not that I could perform them well, but they were so memorably, memorably funny. The characters were so rich and so strong. And um, we knew we had something. And then the casting session, Susan wrote really with those actresses in mind. But the casting session was like an all-star. Uh, this was a pool of talent, and it was similar to what we learned when we did The Cosby Show. We were looking at a pool of talent that wasn't being tapped. And so with The Cosby Show, there was an incredible amount of actors to go around Bill. We couldn't decide the people we wanted to put with Bill because there was so much talent available. Um, and we did it in a record amount of time. And that's the experience we had. 50 plus women were not being given jobs in television. They certainly weren't starring in feature films. We had our pick. And that cast was magical. And when I went, when I went to the taping of that show, the afternoon dress show that we shot, we would do a dress and an air show. Sensational. I, 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 again, I raced to the phone, I called Brandon and I said, hit show, hit show, I promise you. And um, the, they never looked back. Um, we, we knew we had it. And those, but those four women were Susan Harris's first choice? Yes. But I will tell you also that um, there were a number of women that were waiting in the wings. There was the, we were in a talent pool that was hugely, hugely um, uh, available and, and uh, just waiting. Uh, uh, but Susan, Susan had, a, had a great sense of who she wanted. She wrote with, very much wrote with them in mind. And they, they all came in and auditioned. And like the box in USA Today, or the flip side of that, it really tapped into the zeitgeist you at the time. Yeah, the idea that, um, okay, so maybe a spouse is, is gone, may, you know, you're, you're divorced, you're widowed, um, your later years, imagine, we look at it now and we think 50 is nothing, 50 plus, it, it's the world we live in today, we go, it's just the beginning. But they were the show that said, it is just the beginning. It's not over. There's so much life. There's so much ice cream. There's so much love. There's so much cursing. There's so much sex. It's all still in front of them. And that spirit against those kinds of USA Today odds of, oh, it doesn't look good, doesn't look good, it just couldn't be defeated. And audiences of all ages went crazy for that show. A Saturday night, 9 o'clock, which used to be like, you know, it wasn't where people were really putting their best work there. And today, of course, it's, it's either sports or it's, um, it's repeat theater. Um, audiences flocked, young adult audiences soared to NBC to watch that show.